Uh, evening, friends. Let's just bow for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we just want to humbly approach thy throne of grace with thanksgiving in our heart. Hearts, first of all, Lord, for, for the gift of life that we have seen today only by your grace and your love. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the blessing of technology that we can meet as a family far and near to sharpen each other with issues of marriage. We thank you, Lord, for that privilege. Guide us now as we go with our session here, and uh, may we indeed be able to be guided by your Holy Spirit that we can be able to find solutions for some of the challenges we have in our marriages. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, let me, let me um, inform everyone that uh, we, when we planned this thing as facilitators, we thought it was just going to be a sizable group of people. Um, and you know, we were only thinking it's London, but uh, it has grown bigger than us now. And I was saying to Dr. Papu that you, I don't know what to do with this thing now, because it is blowing far beyond proportion. But I think the Lord has just planned it that way, that in this um, lockdown, we can find something worthwhile um, to, to be engaged in. Um, we have people as far as England, I don't know whether they were able to, to connect, and we have got people from Botswana, we have got uh, couples from uh, around Gauteng, KZN, and um, Eastern Cape, Western Cape, I could count a lot of places. So you can actually see that this, this has come, become bigger than us. And we thank the Lord for that. Next time we'll try to increase the capacity to 500 if we have a chance to do it again. But those who are not privileged to be able to get in in good time and make the 100, you must remember that the president said we must not be more than 100 in a meeting um, and keep the social distance. And I think we're trying to keep the social distance, but it was too much. Let me introduce to you the couple that is going. I was going to introduce my wife, uh, but she's inundated with calls from people who want to get in. Um, some of us are not very familiar with technology. But let me introduce her in absentia. Maybe you will see her as the time goes on. Her name is Tabile Kagata. I'm Stanley Kagata. And they refer to her as my tax, the number that um, you have been calling them. We have been uh, married for the past 35 years, and we're blessed with three bouncing boys who are not boys anymore. And let me introduce our host today, who are going to uh, conduct our seminar. Uh, we have a wonderful couple, a wonderful, wonderful couple. They look not old, but sitting in a house, but the Lord has kept them. They look, don't they look as, as super? I think they do. Let me introduce Dr. Um, Papu, Dr. Papu was, was born in Cape Town and uh, she is a husband to Nom Tandazo. You're sorry, he's a husband to Nom Tandazo Papu, a beautiful wife. And they've been married for the past 34 years. And they were also blessed with two bouncing baby boys who are now young men with beard. He loves God supremely and has been passionately serving in God's vineyard uh, since the 80s. One of the things I know he is passionate about 
is, is marriage counseling. And, and both as a, as a couple, I know they enjoy doing this because sometime, some three or four years ago, they visited us in East London and we were at the Osna Hotel where they did a wonderful job. But because of his, their busy schedule, um, it is not possible to get them to do these things again and again. But this time the Lord blessed us and made sure that he locks us in so that we can listen to this wonderful couple. Um, I will now bring, um, uh, let, let me mention the hobbies before I give over to, to, to him. His hobbies are running, cycling, and reading. Running, he runs mar marathons. I've never seen him cycle. I've never seen him cycle, but I think he can cycle. If he can run <laughs> and the reading this is born by the uh, uh fact that he has two doctorates one doctorate in in in, um, in ministry and then um, and then um, phd and, and a phd from a different university um let me present this son wonderful son of africa and the son of god Dr. J. Papu and Mama Nomtandazo Papu. Greetings, friends. Um, it's good to be with you. I'm trying to unmute you, uh, okay. Pastor. Okay, unmute I'm myself. Unmute. I'm unmuted. Thank you. You're on now. All right. Um, greetings, friends. We are doing this thing on two channels. We are also doing Facebook. And uh, so we've got so many things in front of us here. And we are also monitoring the screens because um, because of the number, you see, these sessions are more relevant when we are able to ask questions. So what we will ask you to do, if you have a question and you are on Zoom, there is a way of writing that question. It is somewhere, I can't see it now. It is there on chat. Yeah. It is uh, there's there's people from Kent, UK. Um, they are greeting us from Free State, so you can write privately, uh, and it comes to us if we are asking a private question. If you want everyone to see, you can do that. You can say from me to everyone, or from me to to me to us. I think you can do that. All right, because we'll be asking some few questions that we'd like you to, to respond to. It's good to see you. It's good to see all of you here, couples. Others are planning to be couples. I know there's a couple that are supposed to, are planning to get married in. Yeah, back to him, back to him. There were couples that, are, that, would, that thought they would be married by now um i think oh they were planning to get married in this month and i know some of them are here because marriages weddings have been postponed social distance and some people thought they'll be sleeping with their partners by this time but they are still alone uh wait a little longer and uh, after lockdown who knows what might happen so we welcome everyone and uh, we just want to say to you our topic for tonight is meeting uh, our needs uh, in marriage, uh, one of the basic uh, expectations in marriage is the fact that we marry so that uh, our needs can be met. Greeting friends and from my side, I also um, share the same sentiments. It's good to see all of you who knew that we could meet this way. And uh, Stanley, I was, I was tempted even to, to sing Go Tando. But I know we, we can't do that here. So it is our privilege to be with you. And we are, are always uh, grateful for the privilege to serve. Uh, we are not a perfect family, but like all other families, we are praying. Uh, we are a pray, praying family and supported by many prayers of, 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 of God's people. We are going to start, and as we start, there's a well-known uh, statement uh, written by an unknown uh, author 
which goes like getting married is easy. And I'm sure you can all agree with me when I say that, that getting married is easy. Staying married is more difficult. Staying happily married for a lifetime would be considered among the fine arts. You know, thousands of people do uh, marry every day, but thousands of those marriages that happen easily, you know, among them, there are couples that are going to give up because staying married, it's not easy. It is something else. Oh, by the way, we have, we have stayed married for 34 years, but it doesn't talk about the quality. The quality is another story. You could be married for 35 years, unhappily married for 35 years. So don't even boast about the number of years because we don't know how miserable you are in that 35 years or 40 years. So it's not just the number of years, it's also the quality in those years. Yeah. So we don't just want to have long lasting marriages only, but also quality. All right, here are the questions I want us to look at. And feel free to share something. I've got it also on the WhatsApp page. Uh, I've got, I can, I can also read on WhatsApp page. Remember, if you want to send something that is confidential, say from you to private or something to me. Um, but if you feel uncomfortable, don't respond, but at least have an answer in your mind. Now, what type of marriage do you have currently now? As you sit here in this Zoom, what type of marriage do you have? Don't, don't say, don't ask me that question. I've already asked you, what type of marriage do you have? Happy or unhappy? There are only two marriages to simplify. Happy and unhappy. unhappy. How is yours? Number two, what is the level of your what is the level of your of your satisfaction in marriage? Oh, by the way, on that first question, you'll be surprised. If if we were to come closer and ask that question, how happy you are, you, you will be surprised to find that the wife will say, Yo, me, I'm so happy. And the husband says, I'm so unhappy. It is, it is common in a marriage to find one person happy and the other one unhappy. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that both of you are unhappy. There's one who says, oh, I, this marriage comes from heaven. Me, I'm so happy. And the other one says, this marriage comes from hell. I'm so unhappy. So, but, so we are asking you, not as a couple, but as, as an individual. What is the level of your satisfaction between 1 and 10? If you are bold enough, Please write there so I can let everybody know. But I won't tell them what your name is. What is the level of your satisfaction? One is very low. Ten is very high. Is it? Oh, you want us to also have zero? Somebody says, why don't you put minus five as well? Or minus seven. Uh, but we only have one and ten. And then there's also, what is the level of your partner's commitment? How do you think your partner... What's the commitment from your partner in making sure that this marriage works? For example, we have here more than 100 couples. If I were to ask a question, how many of you had to be forced to come and be part of this, of this presentation? Ah, man, what's, what, what's that going to help us? Our problem is beyond Zoom or seminars. No, come, honey, we, we never know we might benefit. Um, what's the commitment? What's the level of your commitment? And lastly... Uh, but not least, is hope. there hope for your marriage? And I want to say to you, when everything has ended, when everything is not there, hope can bring everything that has come to an end. So let's keep hope and, uh, and, and do the best we can. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, um, there's a book, um, um, there's a book. I had some books here uh, that I wanted to show, but I'll show you at the end because what one of the most important things in our in our in our in our marriage is to buy sources resources mm -hmm. so we can read together. We we need to buy resources. Yeah. So I'm going to show you some of the resources we're going to be quoting here, and also you can still um, um, go to YouTube and find those resources. Most of them you can find them in YouTube. I'll get. I'll get the books um, just now. All right. Gary Chapman has written a book. The title of the book is Desperate Marriages. Hey, but that's not the right spelling of marriages. Eh? Uh, Desperate Marriages. 
Desperate Marriages by uh, Gary Chapman. If you can find the book, get hold of it because these uh, marriages that we are going to quote here that you can see on your screen uh, may actually represent um, your marriage. A marriage where there's a, an irresponsible spouse or even both of you are irresponsible but where there's high levels of irresponsibility. People who start something and not finish it. People don't make follow-up. People you can't rely on. Mm -hmm. People who, for whatever reason, will, not, will, will always fail to do what they promise to do. Irresponsible spouse. Marriages. Those are desperate marriages. Workaholic spouse. A spouse who works is, is, is uh, to a standstill and has no time for romance. I was talking to a couple not a um, few days ago. The husband works so hard, but the wife says, I see that he works so hard, but I just want us to have time Thanks together. together. Um, workaholic, a controlling spouse. Let me see the hands of the spouse, spouse who are controlling. Can I see the hands of those spouses who are controlling? <laughs> Let me see your hands. Okay. All right. There's no one who's controlling here. So don't come and complain to me and say, Pastor, my husband controlling because I asked you and he said no one. Controlling spouse and controlling uh, and uncommunicative spouse or spouses or in that marriage, both of you are not communicating. Uh, how about verbally abusive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The spouse that is ver ver verbally, uh, verbally abusive and then another one physically abusive and sexually abusive, uh, unfaithful spouse, alcoholic, drug abusing spouse. So, no, no, number seven is sexually Se abused. Sexually abused, yes. In other words, you have a spouse in your marriage that was abused uh, when she was a daughter, a girl, uh, when she was growing up, uh, or a man who was abused when growing up. And then you could also have a spouse that is abusive sexually to your own children. And then, of course, an unfaithful spouse. And then the last one, alcoholic, drug abusing spouse. Now, I'm going to suggest that if you feel that your family is actually number seven or number six or number five, that book by Gary Chapman will help you a lot because he deals with those, uh, with those desperate families and then he gives suggestions, evidence-based uh, suggestions. Here is the, here is the book. Uh, I'm sure you can see it. And they're on the Facebook as well. But I'm sure if you go to YouTube, you should be able to find this book. It was printed when, let me see. Uh, you can even get an audio. It's good to get these audio books that you can listen as you drive uh, when the lockdown is over. And then listen to these books. Um, I'm going to show you other books that we have. Um, all right. Um, and then let's see. Um, what could be the cause of such desperate um, marriages? The first one could be your spouse is a second hand. What do we mean by that? Um, when we look back at creation, Adam and Eve, they were brand new from God. But us, we are not. We are not brand new like Adam and Eve. You know, we've got experiences, we've got baggages, we've got hurts, we've got um, uh, disappointments. Another cause, uh, cause can be spouse is damaged goods. You know, it has something to do with your history, where you come, come from. Or maybe the, the, sp the spouse is, is sick uh, physically or even emotionally, emotionally sick. Uh. Uh, emotionally sick. Um, spouse looking for a parent in another one you know in, in the spouse looking for a parent in another spouse in another spouse yes uh spouse damaged by by, by marriage and la the last one lack of relationship with god with god Th those can be a uh, uh, few causes yeah i like the first one there where it says second hand uh it, it sounds bad but in reality by the time you marry with your with your spouse, your second hand, you are getting into a second hand relationship because you are coming from home with all your challenges. With your history. You are not brand new like Adam and Eve, as my wife has indicated, and that can be a challenge. You still have to deal with that as you go forward, and it can create all kinds of things 
There is no one who drops from heaven. You are not marrying angels. Mm-hmm. We are marrying human sinful beings that have their issues as well and expectations. What is the bi- biblical principle of marriage? When we read um, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave. I want to emphasize that one. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave. I want to emphasize that one. Cleave unto his wife. In other words, we leave for us to cleave. If I can just spend a little bit of time uh, when when it comes uh, when uh, emphasizing cleaving. Cleaving, it has something to do with you uh, dedicating yourself to your mate you know it is an ongoing explore, exploration of one another you know it is learning and appreciating one another it means sharing uh, our uh, on a deep level on a deep level so in other words we are responsible responsive to the needs and desire of each other that's what it means to cleave yeah thank you very much that's beautiful just uh, an aside, those uh, watching on Facebook, uh, if, if, if reception is poor, it is probably poor on your side. But if it is sound, we're trying to fix it here. Please indicate if sound is not coming on okay on Facebook. I think Zoom is fine. But on Facebook, if your sound is not coming on okay, let us know. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping tabs. I'm looking at what is happening here. Uh, some are saying they've been they have nine years in marriage. By the way, do you know that nine years is above is more or less the average year period when people divorce. So those nine years, we wish you all the best. You are on a very mm. uh, critical period there. We pray that you'll go beyond that. I can see you will if you are attending this seminar. All right. Now here's something that we want to share together, which actually is uh, thank you. They say sound is good, um, which is. Um, the basis for marriage, and I, I want to take some few minutes on this one. Some of you have seen this diagram uh, in some of the seminars we've presented. Um, if you look at that at that text here, this text, uh, the husband shall leave his father and the mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. This is where the problem starts. It, it, we, we leave our parents, we come together, but we never fully cleave. You, you are there, but you are not there. You are there, but there is no, there's no cleaving because... There is no leaving so much of the parent. We bring the parents over in one way or the other. The negative and the, and the painful from your uh, home or, or your background. And you bring it here and it creates problems in coming together. But beyond that, I want us to look at this, at this uh, diagram here. And I'm sorry, man, the Facebook guys are not able to see the, the PowerPoint here. But if you were to look at this at this diagram, it has a two circles. One is me, me, and the other one is you. And then there's a bigger one that encircles both me and you. In other words, in a in a marriage, there's me and you, a husband and wife, or husband and husband, or wife and wife. But there's me and you, and and then there's us. Us is our relationship. But sometimes we focus on us at the expense of me. me. And at times we let me destroy us. In marriage, you need to balance. We need time for me and time for us. We need to make sure that me does not destroy us and us does not destroy me. In other words, you cannot lose your individuality in marriage. If you look at those two circles, they don't overlap. They touch there nicely. So they are, they are differentiated. You can tell where is me. You can tell where is you. In other words, when you marry, you don't lose your identity. All of a sudden, you used to sing, and you marry somebody who does not sing. Then you stop singing, so that so so you can be the same. Or you you were not singing, and your husband says you got to sing because I'm a singer. Or you were this or that. You you there is some form of who you are, your, your individuality that you must listen. never be sacrificed. Mm-hmm. You do, you do not become a, a, a mesh potato. Yeah, you don't become a mesh potato because once you become a mesh potato, then we are not able to identify who you are. And such marriages where people lose their individuality, where the individuality is meshed, it's, it, you'll hear people saying, I, I am suffocating in this, in this relationship. I can't breathe. I wish I can find a breathing space. And some of you hear, you'll hear saying, 
I want a me time. I want just time on my own, which is good, by the way. But sometimes it comes as a protest that I want a time on my own. So what, what we actually, as a theory in, in marriage, what we recommend and what is actually biblical is that if you grow your relationship with God, I wish you could have another line here. If me grows his relationship with God and you grow your relationship with God, chances are we will grow towards each other and be strong. And the us will be strong as well. Of course, that us would have to link to our children as well. But there's an us that is just me and you. And there's an us that includes our children. And there's an us that includes our parents. And there's an us that includes the church. But it starts with, 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 with me and you, my relationship with God, and our us and God, and us as a family and God. But the us must never um, overwhelm or, or drown the me. But here is a problem that we should also highlight. If you look at the story of Adam and Eve, um, um, I've said this in some places, Adam was created and Eve was created later. They were not created in partnership. Adam spent time with God so that Adam could know that God cares for him as an individual. Eve also, when she was created, Adam had to be put to sleep so that Eve can have time with God. So, so in the creation of Eve, Adam had no role to play. So Eve could stand and, and relate to God. Adam could stand and relate to God. When Adam is, uh, when Eve is created, he's now, she's now introduced to Adam and then God marries them. But both of them have had a perfect relationship with God as individuals. And as a result, they were able to relate to each other. Now, if you can keep that theory in your mind, that marriage must never destroy me. I mustn't get into marriage with all the aspirations of wanting to be to be this and that and I get into marriage and all of those things are dashed and nothing happens and uh, I used to run, I no longer run, I used to sing, I no longer sing, I used to preach, I no longer preach. That marriage has been too expensive if it destroys you. But a good marriage enhances your, your journey. In other words, because I married this person, I even more closer to my goal than I would have been if I were alone. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the other person says the same. So that even if a person were to die, and God forbids that uh, a person were to die, but some, a person were to die, your wife, you could feel that, you know what? She was so much, she meant so much to me. He meant so much to me. I am where I am because of our relationship. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say, hey, good riddance. I've lost so much because if I was not married, I would be far by now. I've heard people say, you know what? I would be very far now had it not been for this man or for this woman. That happens when we sacrifice our dreams and sacrifice our goals. The reason we are attracted to each other to begin with, it was because of those dreams and aspirations and those things that we, we enjoy doing. So in other words, th this mystery of oneness um, kills these notions that, that says, I was done a favor to be here in this marriage and also i don't know is it a greek f philosophy that one of, of 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 better half yeah yes you come in, in into marriage as a complete being a complete mate a complete spouse you are not here because you have been done a favor to be here so so that the whole your whole life in, in marriage you 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 feel guilty you know, to, 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 to accomplish something in life because you are, you are afraid. Uh, in some marriage, it is also verbalized, you know, that, that you are here because of me, you know. All right, thank you very much. So that is the basis of what we are going to say. So basically, if you look at that d diagram, then you know that... Uh, we are there for each other, yeah. but in one sense, but I also have to be there for myself mm -hmm. and you for yourself and us as well. Um, here's a, a beautiful quote here. Happiness in marriage is not so much about attempting to get one's need, needs satis satisfied as it is about reaching out to meet one's spouse through needs. And I think you can do just that if you are a complete being. 
you know who you are. You are not, you know, threatened by your spouse, so to speak. Yeah. Um, um, and one of the reasons why people who marry should be matured, because kids don't are not able to meet other people's needs. Kids are just taking it, taking it. Yeah. Uh, the level of maturity is to is to be able to say, I'm in marriage to share, not just to get. And if the other person says the same thing and you say the same thing, so you both are sharing in marriage. So marriage is basically not for selfish people. If mm. you are selfish, you mm. will run your marriage aground. You will really um, get your marriage on the rocks. You will, you will, you will, you will be very unhappy. Marriage is about trying to make the other person happy. Yes. If you, if I make my wife happy, I will be happy. Marriage is not about me making myself happy at the expense of, the, of of my wife. It is also trying to make sure that I don't make my wife unhappy. I need to know those things that make my wife unhappy, and I don't do them. But it is also making each other happy. Uh, uh, for example, if I were to make an example, um, some of us don't like going to do groceries and or shopping, whatever, um, and, and, and following each other there. It's, it's difficult, especially if it's not a lockdown um, and there are other things playing on TV. It's difficult. But I always say, if it makes your wife happy, go and do it. It's not going to kill you. It, I mean, there are certain things you don't like, but you do them because yeah. they make your partner happy. If it makes my partner happy to go with her to the mall for two hours, I will go because it makes her happy. And if she's happy, I will be happy also. And you know what? When the wife is happy, I'm saying this to, to some of us men, when your wife is happy, you don't know what else you might get uh, when the sun set. So, so try to make each other happy. Make it your responsibility that I will not go out of my way and make my wife unhappy. If it happens, if it happens, then you have to say, I'm sorry. Uh, but that was, not the, that was not the intention. How do you go about building emotional closeness and intimacy in marriage? By being there when your companion needs you the most. As you know that this is a journey and it is a long one. It has ups and downs. It has up, ups and downs. So we need to be there for, for each other. Yeah, there's somebody who says what makes a man happy is a woman satisfied. Of course, a woman who is satisfied is a happy woman. And when it comes to the bedroom ministry, the dictum there is you make your partner husbands you make them happy and you'll be happy what does it say if you if you if you do something good if you make my day i will make your night that's what it, that's how it says you make your wife's day she will make your night but if you don't make her day and you expect a night you will wait forever <laughs> all right um the next one the next slide by meeting emotional needs of the of the other person. Of course, that's how you um, um, grow your relationship. Yes, and then another one by by making I think you have skipped there by making deposits in the relationship bank account. Can we talk about that? Wow. Uh, this this phrase comes from Steve Covey. Stephen Covey, I think, is late now, and his argument is as follows: that if you do something good you are depositing into an account, what he calls an emotional bank account. So if I buy flowers for my wife, and everything you do has a value, it depends what your wife loves. If your wife loves flowers, if you give her flowers, maybe you get 10. If you take her out, maybe you get 20. If you mow the lawn, maybe you get three. If you make sure that the, the, you don't leave your shoes lying around, Maybe you get half uh, or you get 10. It depends how clean your wife is. There are some women who are very uh, uh, obsessed with cleanliness. They can even give you 100 for taking care of your shoes. So you, whatever good thing you do, you get a point depending on where your love, where your, where your love language of your wife is. If you love service, if she loves this, and then she gives you the points. Now, when you must withdraw is when you probably do something like, for example, you forgot to bring the bread that he asked you. So you have withdrawn from the relationship. But because you have deposited enough, yes, you yes. are able to withdraw. Because you have 1,000 points, 
So forgetting bread could be like what? 900 points, you never know. But the issue here is with, with for every withdrawal, they work it out. The ratio is 1 is to 5. Some people argue. So if 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 you if you deposit uh, you do 10 things to deposit and then you have 100 one withdrawal can take 80 points from 100 just one withdrawal is always is always more than depositing so you have to deposit more and withdraw very less because withdrawal takes a lot so so if 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 your relationship is running on empty emotionally that is you are not putting in something in the tank i promise you that family is going to be explosive. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a commitment to meeting each other's needs on an exclusive basis. When we talk about um, commitment, it is where we each do whatever it takes to, to make the marriage work. And it is also where we accept that there are times when I will not get my way and I will be okay with it. That's what co commitment means. <laughs> there are some people who are saying, I, I don't like the point system. It's, it's not fair because withdrawal is a lot. That's life, whether you like it or not. Um, but, but can we talk about exclusive basis that we meet? Here is the point, beloved. There's a book. Uh, um, there's a book. We're going to refer to that book very soon. We're going to refer to that book uh, now, now, now. Uh, hey, Zoom is gone. What is happening? Are we still on Zoom? Yeah, we're still there. Uh, I've, I've done something and I don't know where I am. Uh, um... Uh, Stanley, can you just unmute yourself and let me know whether uh, we are able to communicate? Yeah, uh, we can still hear you. I've lost my screen here. Um, we, we can see we can see uh, your screen here. It says marriage is a commitment. Um, maybe if you can reload it again. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Okay, fine. Let me see if I can if I can share the screen. Let me see if I can share the screen again. Yeah, marriage is a commitment to meeting each other's needs on an exclusive basis. I'm going to make that point again. And where um, this one author says, how do you uh, how do you affair proof your marriage? If and and I want you to listen very closely here. Uh, if any of your needs, and we're going to be looking at those needs now, are met by somebody besides your spouse. That somebody will very soon become your spouse. Keep that in mind. If any of your needs are met by somebody who is not your spouse, very soon, if not sooner, that person will become your spouse. Keep that in mind. Let's look at what we mean by needs. Um, let's look at what we mean by needs. This is the book by Harley. Uh, if you go to YouTube and you just say his needs, her needs, you'll find, I think they have the audio of this and the presentation. Um, you can you can watch that. So please write that thing down. Uh, okay, write, write that down. It, 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 uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, um, she, I, I think the author argues that the wife generally, woman generally, doesn't mean every woman. But the greater percentage of women have those needs in that hierarchy. Affection, conversation, conversation. honesty and openness. Financial support. And family, family commitment. commitment. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I want you to look at that because we can't put this in juxtaposition. For the husband is? Sexual fulfillment, recre uh, recreational companionship, attractive spouse, domestic support and admiration. Yeah, that book is called His Needs, His Her Needs. Her needs. Yeah. Um, you can Google it on YouTube and can find it. But what it actually says, and we're not going to go through all the points here, is if a wife does not get an affection from her husband, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult for her to fulfill the husband's sexual needs.
if the husband does not get sexual fulfillment, it's going to be very difficult for, her, for him to be affectionate. But now, where, where do we start? I always say start with the affection. Show affection and then it will happen. But the principle is, if my needs in marriage are not met, it is difficult for someone to meet uh, the other person's needs. So I need to be aware. Now, the thing is, women generally love affection. affection. Am I right? Oh, yes, of course. But you get it more than enough from me. Yeah, you are trying. <laughs> <laughs> Women, women love affection. Not just, you know, we love the real stuff. Like, the, you know what I mean by the real stuff. Women just love to cuddle to and cuddle. just to be um, pampered. Um, um, to know that they are appreciated. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we just want to go where it totally fell upon and then we, we end up and then see, see John and Nessie is into. But women want more than that. They want hugging and they want, and you say, soon they hug and they are pangala, and and funulala, go be, they will do buffoon ends. But women uh, want that affect, and when that is missing, now tell me what happens. What happens if your, your wife goes to work and there's this, um, um, creature who keeps saying, yo, I love your, I love your hairstyle. And then, yo, you know what? I, let me give you a hug. You look beautiful today. And you're not doing that at home. I'm telling you very soon, that person there next to that printer or next to that photocopying machine uh, will actually take your place and be the husband. Now, this is one way of affair proofing your, your marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, financial support is very good. You can't be bringing flowers that you pick up in other people's gardens. Women generally would also want a husband who works, who support the family. But of course, when it comes to us men, we want an attractive spouse man. A daughter who marry a woman who does not look after herself. Uh, when we married, you were looking after yourself, taking care of your hair and the other things and your nails. Now, 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 now that we are married, now that we are married, a person doesn't care. He dresses like a scarecrow. He doesn't use colognes. There is no perfume. Of course, we should buy the perfume. But it just can you can you just emphasize that please the the buying one you know we we're doing our best uh, to to be attractive but it 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 involves this one and this one should be given by 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 our husbands is that fair yeah yeah it should be um, let's call it let's let's quickly uh, pass that one uh, because we we don't have time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right let's quickly see if we can look at other needs uh, uh, this book no it's not this one where's, where's the other one um gary chapman again here he says some of the basic needs is love freedom significance recreation and peace with god in other words when you love somebody love is toxic when it does not allow another person to be free yeah so you need to balance love and freedom you love but you allow the person to be free you don't love the person to death even when she's going to practice with other women in the Dockers trio. Mm -hmm. You are waiting there and saying, honey, I can't live without you. Oh, if I go to women's ministry. If you're going to uh, well, women's ministry, we, we <laughs> help you to send cup. But, but you, you, love doesn't mean you deprive an, a, a, another person of freedom. Um, love must be balanced. Love is there. But the person mustn't feel like I'm not, I'm squashed here. I've, I'm not free. And I'm not going to comment on, on all the points. Um, and then there's also this one. I like this one, the decoding of language. You want to say something on this? Oh, oh the decoding. And I think we're almost, because we, uh, yes. Okay. The decoding language. This one comes from this book, Love and Respect. Uh, Love and Respect by uh, Emerson Egerix. You can also uh, get this on YouTube. Uh, um, there's somebody who wants to know what do we mean by what do you mean by freedom? Freedom is allowing a person to be free to express herself, to be free to disagree, to be free to wear what she wants to wear. It's not free to live promiscuously or free to do to live an unfaithful life because there's commitment, but free within the boundaries of marriage. Free to say, you know what? I just want to take a walk now just alone people must 
know that they, there is some freedom in a relationship because when free they free to be themselves free to be themselves yes uh, free to order what they want to order not forced by the husband to order what they want i don't i won't tell you what i saw in one couple uh, where i felt that this woman has no freedom but that's another story for another time all right um uh, um yes and then here's a, a nice one also learning to decode the language here Agarit mentions the following that if you are a husband, no, no, if you are a wife and you want to communicate with your husband, you will communicate better if you use the word couple. The word couple stands for closeness, not, not only when you want sex. In other words, if you are a husband and you are communicating to your wife or you want to show love to your wife and you want to understand her language, um, uh, when she says, you know what, I feel like uh um i don't know it's like I'm, I'm i'm alone here you must know that there is a need there for closeness um so there's closeness there's openness don't don't uh, talk don't close, close off. off there's understanding don't fix it try and listen. listen peacemaking be able to say i'm sorry a loyalty assure her of your love and honor and cherish her esteem so you think couple then you know that this, this these are the needs of 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 of, of my wife, closeness, openness, understanding, peacemaking, loyalty. Assure her of your love. Don't let your wife doubt to go to Velapi. Assure her of your love. Esteem. Let her know that you esteem her. Mm -hmm. that, but what should wives be thinking? How should wives uh, admit the needs of the husband? Remember, C, chairs, stands for conquest. conquest. Thank your spouse, your your husband for his desire to work and then which is very yeah. important and then there's hierarchy there's as hierarchy. well thank him for his motivation to protect and provide and then a authority acknowledge his desire to lead insight listen appreciatively to his ideas and then our relationship value his desire for you to be his friend. And then S, the last one, sexuality. Respond to his needs for sexual intimacy. Let's not use sex as a punishment, people. People. Paul says it should be consensual. It, we should agree that we're not going to sleep together. Let's not punish each other for six months, for a year. It's not right. It's criminal to do that. Um... But I wanted also to raise something here that women must also uh, listen to the ideas. I remember a story uh, of a couple, old couple. And, and so we were talking and the, the mother said, the mother said, uh, he was telling a, a, an incident that had happened, so explaining. And the husband says, I want to also explain. And the mother said, Oh, um, I don't know how I can say it in English. Uh, you can't expect anything from this one. You can't say that. You're killing your husband. Yeah. You're really killing your husband when you say there's nothing you can expect from this one. This mm -hmm. one is always... Um, oh, yeah, we used to say that at Bethel. But you need to appreciate his ideas. You need to be able to say value the ideas that he brings um, and value his desire to be your friend and, of course, mm -hmm. value also the issues in sexuality. All right. On, on, on the cycle in marriage, um, what we're going to do, Prasten, because I can see that, uh, uh, let me see, I can see that um, the guys who are on Zoom are not able um, to write. I haven't seen anything written here. Unless I can do this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let, let's 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 do this so we can be able to see um, uh, also. So if you have yes, questions, they have, they have written. There are some who have written. Uh, if you check on the uh, chat. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. Um, okay. Fine. I'm um, just trying to make sure um, if there. Are, okay. I will ask is that. Let's not be um, appreciating and say yes or what. We just need messages um, that that uh, have a concern or question or want to respond. 
uh, if you are appreciative, just keep it inside because now there's a lot to go to go through before we can see questions and all. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. So please, so you can write from from you to to private so that I can see it and then I'll and then I'll read it. All right. Um, let me see where we were because we are sharing the screen. So once we we open it up, we don't share. We can't see the the PowerPoint. Let me see if I can get the PowerPoint here. Um, uh, ah, let's go to that. Let's let's go back to what we were doing. Uh, share the screen. We're just going to finish just now, and then we will we will answer the question. Okay. So the, there are these three cycles in marriage. Remember, the question is: I must meet the need of my husband. She must meet my need. And then what happens if your husband does not meet your need and you don't meet his need? And then, and then uh, Egerich argues that then you are in a crazy, in a crazy cycle. cycle. Yeah. Without love, the, so, the, the wife reacts the without, without respect. respect. Remember the Bible says love and respect. And without respect, he, he reacts, reacts without, without love. love. So a husband who's not, react, who's not respected will not love. Mm -hmm. And a wife who's not loved will not, not respect. respect. So, so we are in a crazy cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to be loved so I can respect. I'm waiting to be respected so I can love. That's a crazy cycle. The energizing cycle is... The energizing cycle is basically... Uh, yes, we will, we, will, we will do that on, on YouTube. The energizing cycle is... Um, his love motivates her respect. And her respect motivates... Her love. love. So you love me, I respect you. You respect me, I love you. So I've heard people say, how can I respect Fundisum Tong and Tandio? How can I respect a person who does not love me? And then one says, how can I love somebody who does not respect me? So energizing cycle, you're doing that. But where we want to end as Christians is on the last one, rewarded cycle. You love regardless of her respect. Whether you are respected or not, you love. And then you respect regardless of his love but i like i like the one about love if you love even though there's no respect but you continue loving because that's what it says you you are like christ in the relationship you die for your wife you love as christ loved somehow you'll find the respect coming into play all right so what we're going to do now um we're going to stop sharing and then we're going to prastana we, we're going to start reading uh, questions now so people can start writing their questions so that we can address the questions um, and then here's one from somewhere to me now remember if you say to me no one sees that so I can read I won't tell you where it's coming from it says here I feel have an emotional disconnection from my husband I don't like it when he touches me or try to be intimate I just do because it is my duty as a wife how do I build it back and open up to him I have not reached a level of trusting him with my feelings. I cannot allow myself to let him see my vulnerability, even when it hurts. I think, yeah, this question is deep. It could be that the, something must have happened in the yeah. relationship. The trust was broken. Yeah. The trust was broken. And the other partner is feeling very uh, reluctant to, to be vulnerable again because she gave everything and that was broken. It is, it is, it is, it is, you need um, serious uh, intervention because um, just one or two minutes cannot help you here. When, when trust is broken, it, 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 it may take time for that trust to be restored. And because you feel that you were, you were, you were hurt by whatever that happened, unfaithfulness or whatever, you, you, your body just feels numb and you find it difficult to, to relate to the person. It would be best to 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 share that with your with your spouse and to find counseling counseling for that. All right. Here's another one. Can you read that one? Like uh, when I look at the WhatsApp as well. Yeah. Uh, this one. How do you restore the love and sexual closeness when the spouse has cheated? It becomes very difficult as I find myself thinking of what has transpired. I don't see myself being enough ever. That's 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 a part that's a painful that's a painful situation there. How do you deal with an unfaithful spouse? I'm going to say to you, uh, please get that book. You may get others as well. 
Um, read, you've got to be your counselor in these days. Read, and there's a chapter there on how to deal with an unfaithful situation, an unfaithful spouse. How do you deal with that? I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. I did not check it. So read that book. How do you deal with that? Because there's a there's forgiveness. Sometimes you blame yourself. Sometimes you say, I made it. I'm the one who caused this. Um, but you don't have to feel guilty. Um, 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 but there is um, health and, 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 and wise um, um, decision in um, choice in, in learning to forgive. Because by not forgiving, I'm not saying forgive and let things be. It's forgive. Because when you forgive, you are saying, I don't know what led him to do that. I'm not going to judge him or condemn him. Um, he's asked for forgiveness. I'm going to forgive. But you need to work through counseling so that you can be able to say, how do we make sure that this doesn't happen again? How do we protect this? How do we make sure that we don't come back to the same situation again? Remember, we are all sinners and we make these mistakes. And I'm not justifying this, yeah. but we need to find ways to, to grow together. That's a very painful one. Um, Sorry, what's the title of the book again? It uh, is... Uh, desperate Marriages. Desperate Marriages by Chapman. It deals with all those uh, desperate marriages. Um, it's a nice... It's an, uh, actually, I recommend the book. I've gone through it. Um, I recommend the book. It's beautiful with the illustrations and what you can do. So please get those resources. Don't just sit there and hope that one day you'll find an answer. Mm -hmm. All right? Let me see if I can get my WhatsApp. Yes, yes. It says here, the part on, on meeting each other needs exclusively might cause those who are abusive to think every interaction with the opposite sex is the spouse getting the need elsewhere. Please cut this some more. All right. Um, um, when we say we, we need to meet our needs exclusively, we're basically saying that don't let any other person meet your need. Uh, exactly. especially if it's an opposite partner. I mean, we may run with my friend, uh, a, a, another man, we ran together, we cycled. Oh, by the way, I do cycle stand, plus stand, and then we cycle together, we run together. But when I'm going to wake up from my house and run with the wife from next door, I, every day in the morning we are running together, I, chatting. I, 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 that, that thing of, that need being met by the wife from next door, my neighbor, it will start from running and running and running and you never know where it's going to end. Mm -hmm. You cannot let a, 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 a what is it, a, a different, a, another, uh, a person of, of another gender Gen yeah. meet your, your, your need. Unless it's your mother or is an old lady somewhere or an old man or whatever. But once you allow somebody to meet your need, chances are, it has been shown over there's evidence you will form oh. a relationship mm -hmm. by the way if you look at some of the relationship that has, has been formed you'll find that it was this thing that you know what you're not like my husband you you are so nice yeah but the wife of this man who is nice is saying the same that he's not nice mm -hmm. so so the grass is always it's green on the other side, side. <laughs> you know so so what we need to do Make sure you, uh, you, you don't allow anyone to meet your need. I'm the pastor. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the pastor uh, um, in the Adventist church. After preaching and somebody comes to me and says, A lady, Fundis, yo, I like your tie. And then I look and he says, No, I don't want you to do that. My wife is there to do that. After doing this, what else are you going to do? So there are certain things that you are not allowed. You are not allowed to meet that need. It's my wife who does that. Because the next one, hey, the and Lungsi tie. The next thing you'll be hoping that Lungsi is isn't. All right? You want to say something? Let's go to another question. I think that is clear. Uh, Here's another one, Brasten, uh, on, on, on WhatsApp. We're going to look at this one here also. It says, What about the spouse who's always busy with church activities and no time for family? Oh. He's running away. Family comes first. You don't go to church, but families come first. If an elder is not uh, putting his family first, before long, he's going to be a poor elder. Put your family first. As, as, as church members, we want an elder who loves his wife. 
we don't want an elder who sacrifices his wife mm -hmm. because he's going to force us also to do the same. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a leader in the church, make your family priority. As yeah. a pastor, make your family priority. Your ministry begins at home. It starts at home. This also speaks to, to pastors as well. They can go all over the world preaching the gospel, but if they do not start at home with their families, they have failed. They have failed. Or oh, somebody was asking here, these, these decoding languages, are these dependent on your love language? Yes, they are. They are. Um, um, you, could, you could value something more, but generally... Even if it may not be in the in the top list, uh, but generally that's what most people would would appreciate in that decoding language: chairs and couple for 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 men and chairs for 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 women. Uh, but the the wh where I see the decoding the love language plays a role is on the emotional bank account. So you don't want to emphasize something that is not of value to your to your wife. For example, if your wife is allergic to flowers, you don't want to be bringing her flowers every day because mm -mm. she's allergic. Um, you say, oh, I'm bringing you flowers because nope. you were told in that seminar, I must bring flowers. You need to know what is it that my wife appreciates yeah. or my partner appreciates and then you, you do that. Yeah, Maybe like shoes, maybe. Shoes are very expensive. <laughs> um, um, we want to look at... at <laughs> <laughs> There's another one um, that if I may read, how yeah. do we enable openness in a relationship and remove fear of opening up to each other in the context of intimacy? Yeah, this this um this this should this could also be coming from our background. You never saw your, your mother being close to your father. And now you Hug, all of a sudden and hugging and kissing. All of a sudden you have to do that with your wife. Right. You feel very, very uncomfortable. And it, and some of these are cultural. Um, I, I remember a friend of mine saying to the wife, when the wife was saying, you, you're not even hugging me and kissing me, and yet I'm leaving. And the, and the husband says, what will people, people say <laughs> if, I, if I do that? So sometimes the public display of affection a PDA, a public display of affection can be cultural. It can also have something to do with your background. Your partner may be coming from a family that is very close, where they touch and hug, and may be coming from a family that's very distant. We need to find each other and help one another and indicate that I feel very uncomfortable here, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to adjust, especially if it is a love language or it is somebody else's need. I feel I love to be hugged. Because if you don't do that, you're opening an avenue for that person to appreciate other hugs from other people. Um, so we need to be able to speak and communicate and learn. That's why you start by having a, a, this dating and courtship. So that you can, before you marry, you know who you are marrying. And of course, we teach each other, we help one another uh, along. Sometimes we are afraid to open up because of past hurt, you know. And we struggle with, with such issues and we need to be able to discuss that. In other words, when you know that there's a deficiency in your marriage, don't just sit there and say, ah, God will see. Find a way of addressing that because your partner may actually be suffering and struggling on that point and needing that, 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 uh, that, that aspect of love. Yeah. And I also want to believe that um, we, we need to prayerfully outgrow our past, our past, uh, our history, our culture, you know, we're coming from 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 the past that the language is din daughter, I'm a I'm a Kosa man, I'm a Mutsuana man, or I'm a I'm a Zulu man. In my culture, we do not hug, we do not show affection. So those are the things that we need to 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 prayerfully uh, outgrow them. You know, um, let's not repeat our our parents' mistakes. Some people are laughing at me when I say shoes are expensive. Um, I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not going to buy them. I'm just acknowledging that they're expensive. I, I can still buy them. But it's a fact that they're expensive. So you can't buy them every week. Um, uh, here's a question. How do you deal with a spouse who never keeps secrets from family? 
The family knows details of what happens in the home and in the room, bedroom. How do you respond when you feel like your in-laws are ruling your house in the name of supporting their child? That's a problem mm. of, in, of in-laws who never want to grow and let their children establish their relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They always want to be there. Even when you move to Cape Town, you leave them in East London, they also come and stay in Cape Town. You want to go to Johannesburg, they also come to stay in Johannesburg. All you can do with such in-laws, listen to me carefully, you pray, especially if they are not your parents, you pray that they may sleep in the Lord. They may sleep in the Lord so you can be able to enjoy your life. Because what else are you going to do? You're not praying for them to die, just to sleep in the Lord and wait for resurrection. Because they are making your life a misery. They are killing you. Let them sleep in the Lord. But sometimes there is a partner who refuses to grow. Each time there's something. uh, We need to go to Johannesburg for our holiday. Okay, but I must first ask my mother what she thinks about that. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, grow up. This is your home. But then you have parents that encourage that. So we need to be able to know that, listen, I'm in my own relationship here. And I need to start working. That's why it says, move away from your parents and cleave cleave to your partner there there won't be any cleaving if there is no leaving you leave and cleave Mm -hmm. sometimes because we don't leave we struggle to cleave and i think it is very very important for 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 us uh, as couples to 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 start practicing to be in laws earlier in life i'm just looking at at us here in the screen some of us will be will be in laws soon you know, I'm, 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 I'm speaking to myself here. I'm a, I'm a mother of sons. And uh, as mothers, we are very, very, very close to our sons. We are very, very close to our sons. And we become, we become ugly, ugly mother-in-laws to, to, to our daughter-in-laws because we, we refuse to let go. We refuse to let go. So those of you who are complaining about your in-laws, chances are you will do the same thing to your own children. So tell yourself that you'll be a good in-law. Amen? All right, let's see if... uh, Stan, help me if you can find some questions that I may have missed. Uh, Uh, To the public ones, uh, I, I I won't say the private ones, but the public ones... Does it mean to allow people to wear what seems revealing? Yeah, if it oh, is... Oh, that, that refers to, that, to the other question about freedom. No, freedom freedom has boundaries. I mean, it, 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 there's, there's also taste in freedom. Of course, you allow your, your, your partner to wear what's revealing in your bedroom. You can't be wearing a, a, a raincoat and a... And a and 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 the paraclave in your in your bedroom in a bedroom you can you can be you can be revealing um there are certain things uh, that parts of your body that must be seen by your partner alone you don't want the whole world to to see them there's another question here it says what do you do if you are constantly compared to other spouses that's not right. That's not no. one way of motivating it's because no, no. if you keep comparing your spouse to another spouse You'll be surprised if you were to listen to the spouse of that spouse commenting about that spouse that you think is good. You know, when we sit like this with my wife and we're smiling, after the Zoom, you don't know what we're going to do. So, don't say to your spouse, I wish we could be like Pastor Papu and Mrs. Papu. You don't know anything. Keep quiet. Because life is not always lived in the Zoom. So don't look at a person there. This one wears a pink tie and a pink dress. There's too much. You don't know what was happening last night. Uh, that would, could be the reason why they are putting all that thing. So as much as we will appreciate where to things, but don't, 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 don't idolize other spouses because you don't know mm-hmm. other spouses. Like one pastor would say, if you compare your spouse to another spouse, what do you know about those spouses? So let's let's rather compare ourselves to a principle, look at a principle, what we have agreed on, rather than using people as 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 as, as standards. 
I think another one, if I can just hoi it here, don't don't compare your spouse to, to your father. I'm just waiting for that to sink. Uh, because it's possible as wives to do that, depending on where you come from, especially if maybe you, you, you come from a, a family where you were spoiled by, by your father. Your father used to do this and that and that. Your father had money, da 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 and you come to this marriage, you look at your poor husband and you think that he, he, he cannot match your father. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I know that from experience. Um, I mean, from experience that other people told me. <laughs> 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 that, uh, that you realize that, hey, man, now I know that I'm being compared to the father. My father used to do this. They say, hey, I'm not your father. I'm me. I'm not going to do what your father did. I didn't even see your father. Okay, so as much as we want to encourage one another, sometimes we can discourage by these unfair comparisons. Yeah. It doesn't mean we should not encourage one another, but we have to be very careful to, 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 to um, use things that are actually going to end up discouraging each other. Um... Uh, Prastana, I think I'm done with all the questions. Let's go to those last slides. To, to there's, a, there's a question here that says, what if your partner acts like a father? Well, <laughs> <laughs> who's sharing now? It's not me. Who's sharing here? Who's doing the sharing? Sorry, I don't know what I did. Sometimes my age sells me out. Yeah, you are, you are sharing your screen with us. Stop sharing. What was the question? Okay, I'm trying. What was the question? Nothing to say here. Yeah, stop sharing because we are seeing your screen on the on the... Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. If you go to the top there, it will show you. It says stop sharing on top on top of your screen. Um, yeah, that's it. So here's a yeah. question. He says, if your partner behaves like a father, you will end up treating him like a father. Uh, so maybe, actually, it's a nice way of saying your partner is controlling. Yeah. Your partner is controlling. Mm -hmm. You must always ask permission for him and must always do this. He, he acts like a father. That thing kills intimacy because the moment your wife thinks you are the father, she'll find it very difficult to share the bed with you because she thinks, how can I sleep with my father? You kill intimacy when you behave like a father. You can't be a father the whole day and be a boyfriend at night. Um, so you have to be very careful. You don't want to sabotage yourself behaving like a father. And then in the end, you... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pastor, but... The moment I'm a pastor to my wife right through, mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen somewhere in the bedroom. Hi, pastor. Hi, I'm Fundis. How Fundis? How can you say that? So I have to be the husband and not be the pastor. I'm the husband here. I'm, I'm your lovey. I'm your baby. I'm your whatever. You know, so that it, it runs smoothly. Yes, when we're in church, pastor, whatever. But the moment my wife says, pastor, I say, hey, don't call me pastor. It was the next thing you call me pastor. You want to... Uh, deprive me of certain things because you are a member and I'm the pastor. All right, but the point here is, um, um, let's 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 let you marry a person because you think he's your equal or she's your equal. Don't don't be a father or even be an instructor in the relationship. Yo, you're running a baptismal class in your in your marriage. All right. Um, there's someone here who says, stand on this one of mine. Uh, uh, he says, yeah, can we address financial roles in marriage, partner? When somebody there's no financial support because the wife works, but hubby spends money on siblings, nephews and nieces, it's difficult to be excited when you're financially burdened and the other part ignores it. You know what is happening there? If there's no financial support that the husband is playing that role and then she, he expects intimacy, it's going to be almost uh, empty when it comes to that because there's a need that your partner feels it's not being met because he, she must struggle with the little shares, but your money, you go and you help the whole family, the whole clan, 
but you don't take care of your family. Mm. Now that's that's a that's a big challenge. And I know there are families that expect that uh, family wants uh, my family wants me to buy my mother a house and buy a car for my father, pay the installment, and yet we have a home to run. And those things are are not fair to be to be to be honest. Um, uh, There's another question, maybe related to that one. It says, how do we treat property bought before marriage? I think those things um, should be discussed even before you marry. Because there are some people who buy property just on the eve of marriage. Like a few weeks before they get married. And then they get themselves entangled in these things. We, in the counseling, we say, listen, you're going to be married in September. Um, whatever long-term things you're going to get into, you need to speak to your person you're going to marry. Because remember now, that's going to go beyond this term. But if you are buying something you can pay within a month, that's fine. But, uh, but if you already are involved in that, so even during the courtship, you need to talk about that and decide how are we going to deal with that. Uh, because if you had bought a car for your father, you can't say now I'm married daddy, that car is going to be repossessed. No, you still have to pay. But the other partner must be aware of such expenses as well. I know that thing is very sensitive. There's a couple that almost, if they are not divorced now, on the very same issues of of um, a partner paying all the accounts that she or he had um, um, before getting married. Uh, who is the author of the book Love and Respect? Love and Respect, uh, it is uh, Dr. Emerson Egerix. I'm putting the book here so you can see it. Dr. Emerson Egerix. And for the for the, my friend the, on WhatsApp, there it is, Dr. E, uh, Erickson, um, no, Emerson e Egerix. All right. And this one, Desperate Marriages. Um, there's another one um, that I'm going to fetch now and I'm going to show you that one as well. Um, oh, that one, His Needs and Her Needs. That one is on YouTube. You can find that. You can just type and on the YouTube. Yeah. You can get an audio and listen to uh, and I still, if you go to Kum Bookshop, you can get that one as well. Um, uh, all right, uh, Stan, we, we need to find time to ra round up. This is the, I've been having this Zoom the rest of this day, so it's been a long day for, for some it's of us. Uh, Thank you, yes. Um, we left with five minutes so you can round up. And then we can we can close. Uh, I'll just give the closing remarks when you finish rounding up. Okay, fine. Okay, I'm going to do that just now. Let me just. Uh, okay. Okay. Once you are in a crazy cycle, who should break it, or what is the way forward? You know. Um, let me say this. When the Bible says the man is the head of the household, it means that he is the one who initiates. So he is the one who should exit that cycle. And starts the energized cycle or the or the other uh, rewarded Rewarding. cycle. So so the leader must actually lead in front. You must lead in front. Um, also in the bedroom ministry, um, the leader must lead gently and wait for somebody. You know. Let me say that again. You lead gently. Don't hurry. Lead gently and wait for the person who's following to come to where you are because you are a leader. I won't say it more than I do because I can see there are kids somewhere watching also in some of these screens. So, all right, let's see if I can share my screen a little bit here and then get something. All right. Um, just for reflection. Uh, for reflection purposes. Um, this is their homework. This is your homework now as you leave the Zoom. How do you go about meeting each other's emotional needs as a couple? Please, people, we've spent more than an hour here and a lot of data. Can you please do us a favor? These seminars are a waste of time if we don't take them seriously. Mm -hmm. Can you look at each other and ask the question? I'm going to be doing that with my wife, by the way. Are there needs that you feel I'm not meeting, honey? Can you let me know? And then discuss that. Please do yourself a favor. 
Um, number two. What do you appreciate about your spouse? Make a list separately and share tonight before you sleep. Can that be our homework, all of us, before we sleep? Can we do that? What is it that we appreciate uh, about about each other? Do we have the third one? Yeah, I think that is about it. And then the other one is prayer. Thank you for for our marriage and for the partner you have given me and for your divine plan that made this happiness possible. That should be our prayer. We need to be thankful. Your marriage may not be the best. Your partner may not be the Superman or the Hollywood actor, but he is there and God has provided you with that partner. You thank God for your marriage. You thank God for your partner. And you thank God even for the happiness, even though you may not be feeling it now, but by faith you know that. Mm -hmm. If you pray and you ask God, God will make it uh, will make it possible. Um, and I think if we can always keep in mind that we are a team, we are in this together. We made a commitment that we will uh, walk this journey together so that if maybe challenges come our way, uh, nobody will, uh, will, will say, me, I'm giving up. You know, so if we can keep in our minds all, all the time that we are in this together, we are a team here. Uh, we want the other one to succeed. We want the other one to 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 to, to grow even spiritually. So we do our best to to validate each other and and, and support uh, one another. And it it is prayer, prayer, prayer all the way. So our prayer is Thank you very much. bless us with a beautiful love, okay. relationship that grows to newer intimate heights with each passing year. We dedicate ourselves to making our marriage all you want it to be. Let that be our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Can you, can you remove the sharing? I just want to see the rest of the faces here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It makes it a, a little bit live, as if we are all in my in my living room. I want to thank each and everyone for attending tonight. Um, I don't know whether it's tonight in other countries, uh, but I want to thank uh, thank you for making this event a successful event. If you were not there, if there were two or three of us, we would feel it a waste um, of time. But uh, you have made this this event to be a big event. I've seen messages from my wife's phone, um, other people complaining that they can't get in, other people saying, please increase the capacity, and so on. But I think it's a lesson for next time. As I said in the beginning, that we never expected um, such a turnout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We we thought we were doing it for a small community, but then uh, the, the fire went all the way. And and we would like to thank you very much. Um, for those who could not, if maybe you had invited somebody and they could not get in, I think we will improve on the communication next time. Let me see the hands of those who say, Let, let's do this again. I, I think I think we've got the majority. Brastena, we, we must also yeah. let's let's also indicate that this is going to be uploaded on the YouTube on my channel. Please like the page, uh, Doctor J Papu. Uh, YouTube, we're going to have the recording there. We we we're going to upload it to that channel. Perfect, and we also did a Zoom recording, so. Um, uh, there's many options to get uh, what is we have just recorded this put it on, on Zoom recording. Yeah, and the Zoom is going to be better because it has the slides. It has the PowerPoint slides, um, which may be missing on the on the Facebook. There's uh, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Govi uh, there, my friends. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Govi, hello. I, they don't hear me. I'm sure they are on uh, mute. Uh -huh. we, have, uh, we, we have a group in East London that meets 
once every month. We don't want the situation where you see that um, a marriage seminar is an event. Mm. It can be an event. It's going to be a very continuous thing. My wife wants me to read something from my phone. It says, I'm humbly requesting that you schedule another couple seminar. I could not join today's one. It was full. Oh, was wow. looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. I promise that we will find a 500-seater uh, hall next time. If it also is full, I don't know what you are going to do. We will, I will have to get a stadium. Uh, but I want to thank you very much uh, for, for attending. Uh, we will organize another one because we thought this one was only a local one. But we could see that there is a need and I would want to encourage people to do what we are doing in, in East London. You must meet at the least once a month. Um, and our, our the style that we use is to use a, a, a very semi-informal info, informal kind of thing where we gather together. We talk about these things as, as partners. We share experiences. We are not uh, marriage counselors. We are not specialists in, in the field. But our ex-